everyone. It looks like we're live here tonight. Good to have everybody back for the evening service. Could we all please stand and we'll go ahead and do our evening pledges, please. And you're all ready? I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart, that I might not sin against God. To our Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. And to our American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have the choir up, please?
Now everybody stand and let's fellowship.
Amen. Folks, we still got a lot of people to pray for tonight. Does anybody have any other special prayer requests that we want to add to our list this morning? Amen. What's your sister's name, brother? Brianna? Okay. All right. Anybody else, please? I know like this morning, like we had quite a few this morning. We certainly don't want to forget those and all of those names that were given to me during Sunday school. Uh, we certainly want to remember those. Remember John and Donna on their trip to, I think, out of this country, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I heard somebody said Rome, is that correct? Wow, I don't even know how to get there, so. <laughs> I can't get there from here, so. <laughs> so we certainly want to remember them uh, on the trip and hope that they have a good time there as well. Uh, but is there anybody else that has a special prayer request this, this evening? All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Amen, yes, I certainly remember those. And, of course, we all certainly want to remember our lost people. That it should be the first thing on your, on your mouth whenever you speak your prayer. Let's remember the people in our families. Amen. Those who have a special prayer request, let's all come in at the altar, please, and let's take it before the Lord, please. I'm sorry? Your son-in-law? We'll certainly remember him. Amen. Let's all remember that as well. Amen. May I have the men up for the evening offering, please? Brother Jerry, I'll ask you to say the blessing, please. Amen. Amen. We still have a few announcements to make. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night, uh, the, the kids will be having a back-to-school bash on Wednesday night. 
Uh, I think they're also going to be serving a finger food along with that. So also on Thursday night, uh, Alicia will be having her ladies meeting and her Bible study as well at 6.30. Uh, we're also still collecting uh, sodas for the upcoming homecoming that is on September the 17th. So invite as many people as you can. Remember, September the 17th is her homecoming. Uh, September the 10th, we'll be meeting at La Follette Nursing Home at 2 o'clock. We'll be singing as well as they'll be preaching. And uh, for the month of October, October the 15th, we'll have a special singing. I believe you said that it was the birds, uh, Larry Birds and Singers. So, uh, and if there's any other new announcements, we'll certainly announce them when we get them. All right. Who will be the first to sing tonight? I believe we got Alex and... Uh, Mitch, are you going to be singing with him as well? Are you going to be singing with Brother Alex? Huh? Well, who's first? Who wants to be first? Come on. <laughs> well, come on, brother. The songs gave me a lot of peace, and forgive me, I've sang all day, so I might not be that good, but I'm going to try for the Lord. <clears throat> Selfishly, down on Calvary, only and you gave your life for me, lose scorn. Grab your head with thorns, the way to love performed for me. In your hand, nail in your feet, nails in your side, could barely breathe. You hang down, yet you remain, standing in awe of the price you pay. I never knew a love so true, you gave your life, and still I hold you. To any eyes, then yeah, I can be. Repent, give me for my sin. Paid it all up on the cross. You didn't die, praise the Lord. Give me your hands, give me it all. Turn me in the pie, her knees will fall. You can bleed it all, you're all. Oh, 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 you pay it all. Oh, 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 Sin, yeah, it's ending me and taught my life, oh, as a living sacrifice, Lord, for doing things and pleasing in your sight, the end of you never knew of love so true, you gave your life, you went I hurt you, any life and anything like me. Then I throw my sin, you know, up on the cross. He laid him die, did you the cross? Free my hands, swimming all. You know you my cry, and me the cross. You paid it all. If you, you paid it all. You paid it all. Paid it all. All. He sacrificed in his name, and he lived a lasting life. He told his story, so I can have my story. He didn't tell you through. You gave the gong upon the cross, you bled and died. Mm -hmm. 
You played it all up on the cross. You played and died before I was lost. Here I am, surrendering all. My heart, tell me if you cry. You paid it, you paid it, you paid it. This one right here okay?
coat was so filthy, all tattered and torn. The other was a new coat that never been worn. Well, I'll tell you the first thing I ever did do. I took off the old coat and I put on a new. I tell you the best thing I ever did do. I took off the From the ground, we all bore his image, the whole world around. But the next was my savior, from the heaven so far. He gave me this new coat, praise now. I'll tell you the best thing I ever did do. I took off that old coat and I put on. Now the coat, it just fits me, it keeps me so warm, it's good in the winter and it's good in the storm. My Savior has pressed me in these garments so rare, he fills me with his image. I'll always bear Yeah, I don't have the words. <laughs> yeah, she's got me. Ship 
This morning, uh, Nay wanted me to sing uh, Mercy Walked In for her, but uh, Danny beat me to the punch. But God put on my heart now. I told her I'd sing it tonight, and well, God finally put on my heart that I try, so uh, I don't know where she is, but that's no excuse for me not to sing it once I promised it. So, y'all just bear with me.
Amen. Well, you know something about the older classics and they sung? You know, they've been around hundreds of years and they're just as good today as they were the day they were saved. Amen. I like to sing it. Boy, it's been a good day today, is it not? Good to see everybody. It's real good to see dear friend Ernie and Debbie. Worked with Ernie on the railroad. So anything you want to know about Preacher Bobby? Railroad days? Don't ask him. <laughs> Amen? It's good to have him here with us. God bless you. Let's go back to Job chapter 19, verse 25 in your Bibles. Appreciate all the good singing that we've had here tonight. God has blessed us with an enormous amount of talent, has he not? Job chapter 19, verse number 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Father, if we bow before the throne of grace, Lord, we want to thank you so much for the songs that have been sang for your honor and glory. Lord, we ask God for the power of God upon this message, the words to say, but always search the hearts of those who are assembled here this day. Lord, you know what we stand in need of. Lord, you have blessed this morning and you have blessed this evening. And God, we pray you'll anoint the message tonight as it's being preached. We love you. We thank you. Giving you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In Christ Jesus' precious holy name we do pray. And amen. I preached some this morning about I know. It, Job said that I know. If you know something, there's no doubt. If you know it, you know it. But it's not that you know it up in your mind. You know it in your spirit. And if you know it, it can't be taken away from you. And then I, I preached a little bit about how that my Redeemer liveth. Ain't it good to know we've got a Redeemer? And we know who He is. He's the same Redeemer that Job had in that day. There's only been the one. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the midst of His suffering. I want you to understand that Job is in between chapter 1 and chapter 2 where the devil was, per was permitted to persecute him. He ain't got to chapter 42 where God deals with the devil and gives him back twice as much as the devil stole from him. He's in the transition. He's still in the midst. He's going through the storm. He's still in the valley. He's still being persecuted. He still has health. He still has an accuser. He still has not recuperated everything that had been taken from him. But the one thing that he's still got that he hangs on to is the one thing that you and I need to hang on to is the fact that we've got a Redeemer. If you've been born again... His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. When He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, there ain't a storm in this planet that can ever drive a distance or a wedge between you and God. He's in, he's, he's understanding. He said, I want you to understand, I have a Redeemer. And I said that the, uh, this morning about the Gethsemane in his heart. When Jesus was in Gethsemane, you understand, it was his Father that sent him to die for our sins. He never committed a sin. And in Job, Job didn't do anything. God presented Job to the devil and said, here is my faithful servant Job. You're about to see what this old boy's made out of. And the thing about it is, Jesus bear the burden by himself. Himself. Jesus bore the burden. No disciple helped him. No amen corner to help him. And when you got Job, his three friends didn't help him. They accused him. But he still had a Redeemer that took the burden in his Gethsemane and took the burden in Job's Gethsemane and bare it upon himself. If you want to know why you can get through the storms of life, you've got a Redeemer that lives on the inside of you that's carrying that heavy burden, that's carrying you as you walk along. You'll never bear a burden alone. But thank God you've got a God up in heaven that says, bring it on to me. You just take my yoke upon you. It's going to be all right, I'll lead you, I'll guide you, I'll carry you, I'll strengthen you, I'll walk with you, I'll protect you, I'll give you the strength when you're weak. Thank God we've got a Redeemer that lives on the inside of us that carries us through the storms. He said, I know my Redeemer, but He's not just a Redeemer, He is my Redeemer and He lives. Thank God we serve a God that's just as much alive today as He was in the day of the Bible. 
Thank God we've got a God that can still do what He wants did. How many in this church knows that your Redeemer can still do the miracles? He can still save the lost. He can still heal the sick. He can still carry the load. He can still defeat the devil. He can still walk on water. He can still calm the storms. He can still carry your load. He can still see you safely through from the start to the end of the valley. Thank God the Redeemer that Job has is the Redeemer that we've got. He lives on the inside of us. And thank God I know He's alive. Do you know He's living tonight? Do you know He's living inside of you tonight? My Redeemer liveth. But let me get to this part and I want to preach before I get out. And that He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Job's looking beside his problem. He's looking past the fact of his trials. He's looking past his persecution. He said, I want you to understand I ain't the only one to ever go through a hard time. God's got them through it. God's getting me through it. But he said, I'm looking thousands of years ahead. There is a latter day coming. And the God that lives inside of me, that God that's my Redeemer, that God that stands when I can't stand, and God that I can see when I can't see nothing else, I see Him standing in the latter days. I know there's a time coming when the God that looks inside of me, that lives that nobody can see except for me, He said one day we're all going to see that holy God. He's going to stand, bless God in Jerusalem. Hey, I like to go back to the time that bless God the heavens opens up and God looks around behind Him and millions of church people are there and thank God we're wearing white robes and thank God there's white horses to mount on. God says enough is enough is enough. It's about time that the God that Job saw that's standing in the latter days is the God that says mount up. Come on church, we're claiming my kingdom. There's a throne that belongs to me. There's a kingdom that's got my name on it. There are people, it's about time. Bless God, we rule this earth and not the wicked. Amen. And Job says, I see that day. I see that Savior. Bless God, I know He's coming. Let's go get a kingdom. Amen. He said, I can see Him standing in the latter day. Job said, oh buddy, world you ain't seen nothing yet. If you think what my God does just on the inside of me, you wait till He shows up with His vesture on. You wait till He says the world sees the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You wait until the world sees Him get that rod of iron. You wait till He shows up on that white horse. You wait till His enemies, the blood is up to the bridles of the horses. You wait till He just handcuffs the devil. You wait until He just sits down on that throne. You wait till He puts this world on notice. This is my word. World. This is my kingdom. That people are here. Thank God we're setting it up. And for 1,000 years, we'll rule and reign with Him. Job says, I see it. He said, I don't understand it, but I see my God. He's my Redeemer. He's standing up and thank God He's sitting on His throne. It was promised to Him in the Old Testament. And now He's come to claim it. One day God is coming back. He's coming back with His church. He's coming back to turn this thing around. And thank God He sets up it. Hey, it's good to know, church, that we're going to rule and reign with Him. Amen. Job said, let me tell you. He said, I can see a time when you ain't got no devil running to and fro anymore. How many in this church would like to know that there's coming a day where the devil ain't loosed? There's coming a day when he's going to be handcuffed. There's coming a day where he won't tempt everyone away from God. There's coming a day where he'll not destroy your family or anybody else's. There's coming a day when it ain't about the wicked and their laws and the rules. There's coming a day where right is going to be right again and wrong is going to be wrong and evil and sin are still going to be sin. There's a day when the church has got a voice and everybody's got to hear it. Ain't it good to know that God is setting up His kingdom and thank God we're going to be a part of it. Amen. Thank God the first thing He does when He comes back he, before He ever sits down on that throne here's Michael said come on buddy you're under arrest. He's day in chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Job. It's all about the devil going to and fro. It's about the devil going up and down. It's about the devil trying to seek out some of God's people that he can harm, that he can try to tempt away, that he can bring, that he can bring tragedy upon. And thank God, isn't it good to know that God's got a hole in the ground. He's going to be handcuffed and they're going to throw him down in it. All those prophets, all those time apostle Paul and the others, all those preachers that's been 
that has been jailed for preaching the truth. All those that are going, all those that have been lost their life. Thank God every single one of them, church, is going to be standing there when the one that caused men's heart to put them in jail and did take their life for preaching the Word and preaching in the name of Jesus, they're going to see that one put in jail. And he says, there's coming a day I can see it. No more. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 in Job's life for nobody else's. You know the time when the devil came by and afflicted you. You know the time when the devil came by and tried to tear up everything that God ever built. That time he just stole your joy and your happiness. That time he divided your family. That time he tempted your boys and girls into a far country. That time he just took your joy and he took your tears and he took your shout. All that is going away. I'm telling you, the devil's days are limited. God's had about enough of him. He's had about enough of this world. It's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. God said, if they want wickedness, I'll give them wickedness. But bless God, my church is leaving this place. Ain't it good to know that God has a plan? I look for Him, church, just any day, just to step out on that glory cloud and just come up hither. I'm looking any day for God to step out and bring His church home. That's going to be the best day you and I'll ever have. And Job says, I can see Him. He's going to stand at that latter day. You see, Jesus is standing up for every to every one of the Jobs of this world. Do you understand that there's coming a time that Jesus who now sits on the right hand of the Father, it's Jesus that established the throne of grace. But bless God, you remember the time that in Revelation the Bible says that He stood up and He took the scroll. And do you remember that time in the book of Acts is that when Stephen was losing his life for preaching the Word of God named Jesus and they stoned Him. And He said, I looked up into heaven and there was my God. There was my Redeemer. He's not sitting on the right hand of the Father. He stands up. He's looking me right in the eye. He's got those nail-scarred hands outstretched. He steps on the edge of eternity and He's calling me home. What I'm telling you is this. There's times in the Bible that God says enough is enough is enough. I've had all I'm going to take of this. He doesn't say it. He stands up. And thank God that day in Job. You think Job was the one that was suffering? He said, I can see him standing. He's in the latter days. And God's putting a stop to the devil. He's putting a stop to this wicked world. And God says enough is enough. Bless God, ain't it good to know that God said putting a stop to this. Job says, I can see him standing. It's the latter days. Church, we're in these latter days, are we not? This thing is winding down quick. Let me just hurry up and get there. He said it's Job chapter number 42. It's about to come to pass. Chapter 42, everything that the devil stole out of this world. I know that he gave Job twice as much as he lost. I know he gave him ten more kids. I know that he gave him twice as much livestock. I know that he brought his estranged family, his sisters and brothers back into his life. I know that he did all these things. But most importantly, he put happy and joy back into Job's life. It's a man that was once sitting in sackcloth. A one that had poured ashes on his head. A man that had shaved his head. A man that tried to worship while he was mourning. A man that had a broken heart. And he's trying to praise God through the broken pieces of his heart. But thank God, God healed all that. Thank God he brought the important things in this life. Let me tell you something. It's the joy of God. It's the fact you can lift a hand that you're not bound by the things of this world world anymore. Isn't it good to know that God, He's put peace back in our life. That no matter how things are, you can still lay down and get a good night's sleep because even in your sleep, you know there's a Redeemer that lives on the inside of you and every enemy He's defeated. What I'm trying to tell you is this. This chapter number 42 is on its way. It's not just for Job. It's for this entire world. God's about to bring peace back to this world. Job said, I see him standing in the latter day. 
And that's while he was going through the tragedy of his life, God still gave him hope for the future. I want you to understand our best days are still ahead. Our best days are when he comes back. Our best days are when he raptures this this out. Our best days is when he sets up his kingdom. Our best days is when he arrests and, and handcuffs the devil. Our best days are coming upon this earth. Everything that they said, everything that the world's tried to push us to the side, the world has tried to shut us up. The world has told us this is just a book of, of fallacy. That this book right here is just fables. This book doesn't really mean anything. It was written thousands of years ago. A God that doesn't exist except in the figment of your imagination. But wait, bless God, till they meet my Redeemer. He is real as He's real can be. He introduces Himself to this world. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And one day this kingdom will be His. Amen. Amen. Job said, I can see Him standing up. And he realizes... I've went through a terrible tough time, but these tough times don't last forever. I'm telling you, it's circling back around. Joy is on its way back. Amen. Ain't it, wouldn't it be good to know that one day we're going to live in a world that's godly again? Amen. Let me just go ahead and preach just a little bit. He said, I'll take back everything the devil stole. I know I'm 66. You've heard it a bunch of times. I'm from the generation that understands the song that Mitch sang. I understand the old hymnals. They poured their heart out into it. Those songs meant something. They weren't talking about trying to get a number one record. It wasn't about being rich and famous. It wasn't signing a record deal. It was people of old who had nothing else to hang on to except the same Redeemer that Job had living inside of him. And now what would help them is this, is that the hope that Redeemer gave them, they'd pin it out in a song. Yes, I took off that old coat. Yes, I ain't who I used to be. But bless God, let me tell you about the new coat. Let me tell you about the new life. Let me tell you about the new man. Let me tell you about my Redeemer. It's all those songs that had meaning. Amen. That gave people hope. And their surroundings said they ain't no hope. But yet God on the inside of them. He's the God that's a well spring water that never runs dry. That's our God of hope. Amen. Amen. Job said I could see him standing in the latter days. You see what Job saw was this. He said, Job sees a complete resurrection. What am I talking about? I'm so glad you asked. He sees that there's an end of tragedy. Do you understand that we live on the edge of a tragedy every day of our life? It may start out as the best day and be the worst day in the same day. Do you understand what I'm saying? Job said, there's coming a day. I can see my Redeemer standing in the latter days. He's going to give us a day without tragedy in it. This world is one tragedy after the next. But ain't it good to know that when we live in this world for a thousand years, that blessed God will have these bodies that will never get sick or die. It will rule and reign in this kingdom. My Savior, my God, my King, my Redeemer, He sits on the throne of David. He's got that rod of iron and He rules this world. It's not a, it's not a, a president. Bless God, He's the King. Amen. Job said, I see resurrection. What this world needs is a resurrection of the way things used to be. Y'all remember we've talked about it enough. Sunday you couldn't even buy gas in La Follette. Now you can buy gas and beer and whatever else you want. Job said, there's coming a day when I don't have to never worry about an experience and a tragedy in my life. But he goes on to say, there's also coming a day. I ain't never got to fear death. That's coming from a man that in his heart, he sees God the Redeemer standing at the latter days. He sees ten graves that he dug of his own children. He sees the death of relationships because his own family has been estranged. I may ask him, don't ever raise your hand to this, but wonder how many people has experienced the fact that the devil's come into your home and your family and tore it up from one end to the other. And we've got brothers and sisters 
sisters not speaking, parents and kids won't have nothing to do with each other, kids won't have, you understand what I'm saying? The devil's took the family and he's just fractured it and he split it apart. And thank God there's coming a day, Job said, I experienced it in chapter 42 of my life. Everything that the devil drove apart, God brought it back together. Not only that, but Job's kingdom. Oh, I've got to preach this one. Job's kingdom. You think that all it pertained to was God restoring everything that he lost. His family, his relatives, his children, his wealth. No, no, no. You see, Job's kingdom... Was it just for chapter number 42? That was just what God gave Job for the right now. Job's looking at the latter day. He's looking at the Redeemer that was in his heart that's standing at the latter day. He's saying, I want you to understand that the kingdom God is going to set up is the chapter 42 kingdom. That means where God brings joy. He restores peace. He puts everything with love back together. He gives us plenty and then enough, but He gives us love, joy, and peace. Amen. Amen. That's a kingdom where you don't ever have to worry. Not only that, but He looks at a throne in Jerusalem. And he looks at the devil handcuffed. You see, the devil in chapter 1 and 2 was going to and fro. He was somewhat limited, but he had a lot of free will. It's just whoever caught his eyes who he, he afflicted. God said, what do you think about Job? Boy, didn't the devil in about two or a few of them chapters, didn't the devil think he really got it? But you know the one thing he never did get? He never got Job to curse God. Oh, he cursed the day he was born, but who ain't done that? Who ain't never had a really bad day and says, why do I have to be me? But he never cursed God because the devil wants us to be able to turn our heart against God. But it ain't going to happen. He sees that rod of iron. Let me get to the end of this. i got to finish this preaching. You see, what he did is that he redeemed us and Job from a series of trials. What does that even mean? It means this. Our life is made up of little events every single day. It ain't the big thing because we don't have that many big things show up. It's all the little things that add up and add up and add up. It's the one thing that could go right, but it didn't. It's the one thing that almost went right, but it had this little glitch. It's the other thing that I had everything was pretty good, except this one thing happened. It's always trying and trying and trying and never being able to get to where that you want to be. It's all these little things of life that add up. It's the what is in life that it could go good except if this happened. It's the fear that we have of what might happen but never really does happen. And Job said it's this. He has redeemed me from all the little things. If you've ever been through what Job had went through, how could you have peace in your life that you wouldn't wake up tomorrow and everything you just accumulated, it all went away like it did the first time. If it can happen once, it can happen again. That's when Job had the reassurance that in his kingdom Kingdom, that God resurrected everything. And the one thing God must resurrect in order for us to have peace is for you and I to have the assurity this won't happen again. Amen. Amen. Let me finish out with this. Job says this. He said, In my flesh I shall see God. John the Baptist We've talked about him a time or two, have we not? Forerunner of Christ, preached Christ his entire life. Then in the latter day, you know what he asked to his disciples? Will you go ask Jesus, is he really the one or must I wait for another? Job never had that. Job never had that doubt. You see, what the devil would like you and I to do, dear friend, is this. He wants us to start doubting God. 
What do we mean? We're never going to doubt God can. We know He can, right? If He can get us to doubt that God will. Ain't that where it's at? God, you did it in the Bible, but will you do it for me? God, you did it for this one. And it doesn't help when the TV preachers of this world who save everybody they meet and heal everybody that comes before them, and you're asking yourself, if they do it, air quotes, then why can't it happen here? May I remind you that this little church right here has seen a multitude of miracles happen. We know God will, if it's His will. Well, let me get to this right here. I just need to slow down the kitchen breath. He said, in my flesh I shall see God. You see, God is going to restore Job's and God's kingdom before the devil can ever corrupt it. He's arrested, right? Ah, right, let me just wind this down right here. Here's what I want you to get a hold of. And you are going to be this person too. When that, when that takes place, God is coming with His saints, right? Amen. We're coming on white horses. Ain't that what the book says? Amen. When God sets up His kingdom, here's the picture I got in my head just today and studying on this for tonight's message. Here you've got Job. He said, I can see the, my Redeemer in the latter day. Ain't that what the book says? He said, I can see it. He sees the kingdom. He sees God right up. He sees God take the rod of iron. He sees God set down on the throne of David. He sees God set up His kingdom. But here's the part that just got me shouting and I was the only one in the room. Is the fact of it is, I believe, bless God, whenever he sent Michael the archangel, get them cuffs ready. He don't even read him his rights. He ain't got any. Just give him what he says. Just put his hands. Just tie him up. Just throw him in that hole. But when you do, before he goes down in the earth, before he goes to that place prepared for him, he said, Job, come up here just a minute, my friend. And I can see, bless God, I'm about to have a spell up here. I can see Job. He's got it. His 20 children. He's got the God that he got the first 10 and he's got the second 10 God blessed him with. And I said, believe he said, Job, come on up here. You saw my Redeemer. You saw it was me. You saw me standing in the latter days. Hey, Job, watch this. Remember that guy right there? He's the one that killed your kids. He stole everything you have. Bless God. Watch Michael. Arrest him. Amen. Woo, glory. And it's, and it just goes on from there, church. What I'm saying is everybody that's ever experienced a tragedy, everybody that's ever buried a child, everybody that's buried a spouse, everybody that's buried a family member, watch the devil get arrested. Amen. Amen. And God binds him up. Everybody that claims to bind the devil, he keeps getting loose. Ty better not. But when we all witness Jesus setting up His kingdom, Amen. Amen. Michael, who ain't easy with Him, He never reads Him His rights. He don't have any. You have the right to remain silent. Do you figure what He'll scream like a caged animal? His freedom's been taken from Him. He's handcuffed and He's thrown into some big hole in the ground. And that right about then is when things just start and I can see a big shout go up from the God's kingdom. And we have everything that He's ever done. He's fixing to pay for that. I'm telling you, church, there's coming a day. Thank God He's going to make all the wrongs right in this world. Amen. 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 Mr. Dolores, would you all come to the piano? Here's something that you'll never hear the devil say. You want to know what it is? Yes. Well, I got one, yes. You want me whisper it in your You'll never hear the devil look at Jesus Christ and say, My Redeemer. Do you understand? He gets no second chance. He didn't die for the devil's sins. He's not the devil's Redeemer. What I'm telling you is, God, when Jesus said, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, you're about to see vengeance when He sets up His kingdom. Amen. 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 
While we stand to our feet, if you have a need of prayer.